Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honourable Philip J. Pierre, members and staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, and members of the media, good morning. And um, thank you for coming to our pre-cabinet briefing. As you know already, my name is Mondi Lewis, but this morning I'm in a different capacity. Um, but I want to thank you all for our last two years um, of you know being together. Thank you for your cooperation. I can say that um, at no time were you ever resistant to sharing the work of the Office of the Prime Minister, despite you know our wranglings at times. Um, I think we were always you know um, amicable, respectful. Um, and this has been a it has been a pleasure for me as press secretary for the last two years um, to share and grow with you in the position. And I really count it an honor to have worked um, at the office of the prime minister um, and to serve the prime minister himself. It is one of my highest honors, and I thank you all for making uh, my journey over the last two years really enjoyable and educational. I must say it was a steep learning curve for me, but um. No, I think I did well. <laughs> um, but um, my contract has come to an end. So I, again, you know, would like to thank you all for your support. And again, thank you, Prime Minister, for supporting me, um, for choosing me, for having faith in me um, throughout this journey. Um, but, you know, all is not lost. We have some good news today. Um, so I would hand over to the Prime Minister to um, inform you. Honorable Prime Minister. Thank you, thank you, Mundi. Um, good morning again. Good morning. I want to, <coughs> to really thank Mundi for spending the last two years with me in the office of the Prime Minister. Um, you know, sometimes it was not very easy. With you guys, it's not very easy. <laughs> but I want to thank her. And, to, and I want to do on this morning to tell her how the job of press secretary isn't very easy because you have to take all the bad things the prime minister does. But if she did well, I was very pleased. And I want to introduce my new press secretary. Um, I think it's, I want to introduce you, Melissa Paul, who is the new press secretary. She start to work officially today. So I thought since you're the one she will deal with, I thought I'd bring her to you myself and tell you to treat her well. <laughs> Melissa. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, esteemed colleagues, I stand before you today with immense gratitude and a profound sense of duty as I embark on this journey as press secretary to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Philip J. Pierre. It is a privilege to serve as the Prime Minister's voice and facilitate a new era of collaboration between the government and the media. As a linguist and a former journalist, I understand the power of words, the importance of context, and the value of accurate information. My background has taught me that communication is not just about conveying a message. It's about building and understanding and trust. It's about forging connections and ensuring the voices of the people are heard. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. And I assure you that we will be providing you with a press kit later today with more information. Yes, back to Monday morning. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Sir, you're in charge. <laughs> Yeah, um, so Prime Minister, so um, recently you had a tour of the, um, the, 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 the police station down in Beaufort. Mm. Um, in light of that, I just wanted to know some updates on maybe the custody suites and the Hall of Justice. I, and for the Hall of Justice, I know you said it was placed somewhere, but I haven't seen anything. Really. So well, so well, custody suites have started. Work is going on the custody suites as we speak. It has started. Um, I understand that it's supposed to be about nine months to a year. I hope it happens before that. But work has to, work is actually going on in the constituencies as you speak. Work on the Grosley Divisional Headquarters, the, I was, the contracts 
either have been signed or in the process of being signed. And again, work should start on the Grosley or on the divisional headquarters for the police, for the northern branch of the police should start before the end of the year. It's a, it, it, it's a huge complex um, and I'm very proud of it. It's going to, it's going to give, give the police a, a, some, an environment where they can work and produce. I'm very happy for that, just as we thought. The House of Justice, as I said to you, it's a NIPRO project. It's going to be funded by NIPRO. Um, the last I heard was the finalizing as a bold agreement. The, is the, the government will be, will be, after the loan has been paid, the government will get the building, same as the Ministry of Infrastructure. And then I think that they are making necessary arrangements for, for, for the, the, the soil tests. And that should start, hopefully, early in the new year, by January. And while, while we're doing that, repairs on other police stations will be happening because the police stations were, as you know, in the state, some of them needed, needed repair. And these stations were built between the years 19, from 1998, 1999. So they are going to be, um, going, going to, to be looked at. So this is a question on the, on the police infrastructure. Just one follow-up on that note. Um, unfortunately, uh, another guy lost his life in the Ford um, yesterday. Um, but I just want to know, is report still considered an escalated yes, crime Yes, still, area? before they said, yeah. yeah. It's created, it's created crime areas still. The law is still in effect, and report is still. Do you think the police are using that deal to the, to the fullest of its capabilities to quell? Um, <laughs> you see, as I always said, as I always said, I think the majority of policemen <laughs> are doing their best. But you know, you can't police 24 hours a day. You can't. No, no, no. It's almost impossible. The police are trying. Um, there is need for, for improvement in anything. There is nothing is perfect. But again, the senseless loss of life, we have to find ways to resolve our conflicts. We have to find ways to resolve our conflicts. And many things are not helping. When an atmosphere of... of disinformation and atmosphere of, 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 of slander and, uh, and atmosphere of misinformation is being perpetuated. It's been, you know, people react in different ways. Um, but I think that good sense will prevail. I think the, 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 the situation is not, is not yet under control. It's far from under control, but we are trying. I, um, we, we've just got four drones from the Taiwanese government, which will be put into effect very shortly. Drones will help. Drones is, is the, the modern way of crime fighting. We've got four of them, which we, we will put into, we, we will put to work shortly. So it's a work in progress. Again, I want to thank the, the police for what they do. It's, it's, it's not easy, but it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. But I'm not dissatisfied. I think one murder is too much. Um, but it's work in progress, which we are. Um. On Friday, it was announced that Tenusha wanted to be to host Cricket World Cup games, T20 World Cup games next year. Um, I'd like you can give any details um, surrounding that deal um, towards these, these games, and if not, um, just speak to the economic impact that such a tournament can have. Well, I was actually at, at the UN when I, I got the news when it came to me. I understand we have four group stage matches, if I'm correct. We're excited about it. Because, you know, there is a nexus between cricket, these major sports events, and the circulation of money in the economy. Um, we expect every hotel room to be filled, just as the jazz festival, the spillover effect. Every hotel room is, is, is going to be full. We, we expect that. We expect visitors to come from far and wide. We still have an issue of regional transportation. We still have an issue. Um, that is something that we, we have to work on. But I, I, I also think the publicity the country will get throughout the world, the country St. Lucia, because part of the contract is that the country St. Lucia is going to be shown, the, the beauty of our country, the sights and, and seas of our country, that's going to be shown. So the, the, the impact of that 
advertisement alone of that exposure alone is worth millions and millions of dollars. So very excited about it, but I'm sure the Minister of, the Minister of Sports will give you more, more details about it. Yes, um, Mr. Prime Minister, um, one of the pressing issues that your administration was faced with is the, the, the road conditions. And you know, barring the weather conditions, and, you know, the, what has been, uh, what would you say has been uh, the update on the road conditions, specifically the Millennium Highway? The Millennium Highway, I was, I, I drove there on Sunday when I came from, from the airport. I noticed there's been some work being done there. Um, some part of the road has been, at least the, the, the first level of resurfacing has happened. Um, I expect to have a delegation from the Caribbean Development Bank early next week for a discussion. As you know, the last time I visited, I gave them a six week deadline. These six weeks are going to be uh, are ending this week. I noticed something has happened, but I would like them to be more progress, um, but something is happening, and when I get the updates, when, when the, the CD becomes, I'll be able to give you more information, but something is happening. So you see, you expect more developments? I expect them to, to move m with greater his going forward, because something has happened. I don't know if you've, been, if you've been there recently. Some part of the road has been resurfaced. Something has happened. I said to move forward because I'm not very happy with them. I've told them so. And we will ensure that the, the people of St. Lucia, albeit grant funds, albeit grant funds, but still for that, the confidence of the, the, of the, the donor must be maintained. So we are working with them. And hopefully, when I get the update next month, next week, I'll be able to get it. One quick um, one. The, um, the Rodney Bay project. I know there's been some contractual arrangements and whatever. But there are certain key areas like the bus stops. When the rain falls, it's a hazard. But people cannot go to the bus. Would there be any interest? Where is that? The, 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 the Rodney Bay. The, you made the $15 million half mile road? Well, I don't know what to call but this uh, Rodney Bay project has been, you know, it's been just laid. Our position, you know, I don't know why, our position has been clear, you know. You know, we seem to, our position has been very, very clear. Very, very clear on the Grosley Road Highway. Very clear. We left government in 2016 with complete approval and loan financing for the completion of the Grosley Highway from Shock to Grosley. Complete funding in place, loan in place, everything in place. The government changed in 2016, and these plans were aborted. Aborted in favor of doing the road in pieces by direct award. The previous arrangement was a contractual arrangement that had to go to public and international tender. That was aborted. We returned to government in 2021, and we decided that we are not, at this time, continuing with the project between Rodney Bay and Grosley, because we thought to spend between 50 and $20 million on less than a mile of road with no plan was not a situation we could have tolerated. So we stopped it. Right now, we are in discussions with the Kuwaits to go back to the original plan. The news that I have is that a statement should be done very shortly for the extension of the road between Shock and Marisil. That should be funded by the Kuwaitis. The other section of the road, we are seeking further finance, either from OPIC or from the Caribbean Development Bank. The Caribbean Development Bank has, has agreed to look at it because everyone knows that the productive time that is lost on this highway is causing a strain on the productivity of the country. Why the road was stopped? We've got absolutely no reason, and no one is asking why. For a road that had been funded 
No one can deny that the road was, had been funded. The funding was there. In fact, I have to re, re say this thing so many times. Oh, not only these, but the secondary roads and the agricultural roads were funded. What happened is the tender for the secondary roads was out. What it meant is that the, the secondary roads would have been completed and then the highway, the main highway done. The tender for the secondary roads, the former Minister of Finance wasn't satisfied, not the last one, the one before that, Dr. Kenny Anthony, wasn't satisfied, so he sent it to retender. And the day the tenders board had to open was election day. 6th of June, I think. Right? So that never happened. When the, the other government came to power, they stopped it. They cancelled the loan. The same way they cancelled the loan for the LED lights, which had been confirmed and approved by the CDB. We seem to be forgetting that it was cancelled. So we had to start from afresh. And they decided that they would spend, fix the road in parts. And the road debate section would have cost between 15 and 20 million dollars for less than a mile of road. This is the position. So we stopped it. That's clear and simple. But we understand the issues of the road. We understand that there's a lot of productivity being lost on that, right, on that highway. And we hope, we hope that with what we have in place, we should start from Shaw to Marysville. In, in, in a short period of time. According to the rest of the roads, very soon you, you, you be going to, you're going to see improvements on the road surfaces in St. Lucia, very soon. And next year, next year, if I can tell tales out of school, will be the year of infrastructure. So rest assured, your roads will improve. I can assure you the roads will improve in a sustainable way, in a way that doesn't cause us to get car loans, to build roads, in a sustainable way. Because, you know, it's, 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 it will not be a matter of election roads. It's going to be a matter of roads for the people of the country. And if you notice, we've done, the government has done things in stages and in steps. The first year, we had a, a plan. The second year, for health and security, which is the year we're in now. So in that year, you saw work happening in St. Jude, which is going to finish at some point. You saw work happening in maternal health care, in universal health care. You saw work happening in health care in terms of what's happening with, first of all, with the children, secondly, with the adults. And we were, we were ridiculed for seeing about our elderly. Any society that gets ridiculed for seeing about the elderly, the people who do that ridiculing have something to account for. There are more than 3,000 people in this country who are more than 80 years old. More than 3,000 who are more than 80 years old. And we were ridiculed for seeing about them. Ridiculed. But that's for another show. So you must understand the government has a plan. And the plan is working. It's working. So what's happening? You saw improvements in the health centers. You saw improvements, work in progress at the OKE hospital. And you saw the St. Jude. The country did not start on the 26th of July, 2021. It was there before. There were people there before, you know. Ah, Mr. Prime Minister, yes. to remind you, um, the Finance Act, there's been a big debate over it, about um, breaking it and everything. I know you had... You want a copy of the Finance Act to read it? I want you to show me the other section. If you show me the other section of the Finance Act, I, 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 I yield. If you can show me the other section of the Finance Act, I yield. You want, you, you want, you want to get a copy for you? Do you want a copy, so Jerry? No, 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 copy, no, no. <clears throat> you want me to get a copy? You said that you could go around the, the... No, but no. The Finance Act is a public document. If you make a pronouncement, just wait and read it. That's it. Very easy. Just read it. <laughs> you, know, you know, it fascinates me how people just say things in this country. And they just say it. If you say it, that there is something in the Finance Act that allows a particular action. Read it. That's all you're saying. Just read it. Take the Finance Act. It's like, you know, I'm surprised you didn't ask me about the CIP funds. It's a pity. And, you, and these things are being said. The CIP Act is clear. It's clear. 
The National Economic Fund is a statute, is a law. And not a law passed by us, you know. It's a law. It's in the laws of St. Lucia. CIP money goes two places. The National Economic Fund, the adjustment that we made in it is that we said the cabinet could take a decision. So the National Economic Fund, very simple. So when you talk, talk about the National Economic Fund and considered fund, I don't know where is that coming in first. Secondly, is bonds. The bonds have to be repaid. Their interest free bonds have to be repaid. But what we've done is we started a fund to pay, to pay these bonds. The last time I spoke, there were $15 million in that fund. That's the financial management of this government. That is the financial management of this government. We know we have to repay the, bond, the bonds, so we, started, we set up a fund. $15 million already is in that fund. That's the last time like, I spoke about it. And the rest, Say to the CIP, they can they are sanitary board, they can dispose it how, how 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 they do. Sometimes the Minister of Finance determines how it goes. So that's very simple. So all the argument about the CIP funds, I don't know why is that an argument. The law is there. These are not things I say, you know. These are things that are in the law, Jerry. In the law. The Finance Act is a law. The National Economic Fund is a law. It's passed by the Parliament of St. Lucia. Why is that an argument? As I said this morning, it's like Trump saying he'll won the elections. Similar. Even though all the courts say he lost, he says he won. So I can't stop people from saying what they want. I can't. But I can tell you, the law. CIB funds, the law. National Economic Fund, a law. The bonds goes into the considered fund for repayment, bonds and loans. And the rest stays in, in the CIP for administrative expenses and for use of the fund on the direction of on the direction or discussion with the Minister of Finance. Very clear. Loan funds, consolidated fund. Very clear. Okay, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to ask a question. You just said from the UN. And yes, I was. I know a um, number of the issues you mentioned. Nobody asked me about it. Nobody asked me about it. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm asking you. I was waiting for everybody to. So, the, you just kind of, what can you just tell us from the UN and what are some of the significant things that. that, that the, 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 youth, the, 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 the UN General Assembly it dealt with the Sustainable Development Goals, which passed, which were proclaimed in 2015 for 15 years. We, we are heading to 2030, and there's concern that the countries may not have reached the goals of the, of the Sustainable Development Goals, which deals with the quality of life, which deals with, with, people, with putting people first, exactly. And also dealt with climate change, because whether you like it or not, we are in a climate crisis, and the countries that are suffering the most in the climate crisis are the less developed countries. Floods, hurricanes, etc. So these were the main aspects of the sustainable of the UN conference. These were the principal factors that we dealt with. So all of us in all leaders from the Caribbean made a point that this to me, we are missing these goals because the developed countries are not meeting the promises that happen after the UN conferences. And that was the, so every, every leader from the, from the region spoke about how we think we have been shortchanged by the developed countries. Basically, it was the same. And by the way, we, we had some sidebars. I met the president of Cuba. I met the foreign minister of Indonesia. I met the foreign minister of, of, of Saudi Arabia. Everybody is very excited about our youth economy. I know this which doesn't make the press at all. <clears throat> um, very excited about uh, our youth economy. A lot of excitement there. A lot of countries are speaking about it. They think it's innovative. And generally, St. Lucia has a, a, a good profile. And when I, when I travel, I feel elated about the profile of my country. I really feel elated. I want to thank the ambassador and the staff because in, it's only when you travel you realize what people think about our country. And I'm very elated when I travel about it. I'm very elated. In thinking of our country, I in the, in yes, the, in New York. and I celebrated and my birthday with them, and we had again we had a very good meeting. No, no, the basic concern was about view for and crime, and they were 
I explained a little more about the situation. And they also noted that the crime in New York has increased. In fact, they're complaining about the roads in New York, if you don't know. Um, so, 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 and they're kind of, they were complaining about the cost of living in New York. I mean, it's, it's, you, you, you'd think we live in, 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 in the same country. Sometimes you think that you want to have a perfect country. St. Lucia is perfect. St. Lucia is a continent and everything is perfect. But they were complaining about the same thing. Cost of living, same concerns. Roads, cost of living, crime, the same thing. Issues which are worldwide. But make no excuses for us. We have to try to solve them. So what did you tell them? What, what does, uh, that you give them? Always the truth. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, my, my question was, uh, at the last parliament sitting to the Commerce Minister, she made some revelations found out by the Consumer Affairs Department about businesses not complying to some of the VAT exemptions. And uh, in, in some instances, it went beyond not only complying, but they were actually marking up the prices of um, sanitary pads and whatnot. Is the government going to change its tone? Yes, the government has decided that science... Uh, um, it's yeah. going to deal with businesses, not only in this instance, but just future, um, I guess, legislative changes when you have businesses blatantly like not complying. You see, um, <clears throat> all in a sudden, we want people to see the love taxes. No one ever loved taxes, you know. Any tax that any government passes, people don't like it. Nobody likes to pay tax. You mean the, the, the United Workers Party government did pass a security tax. I don't know if you remember that. The United Workers Party was the first government to pass a security levy. They were the first government to do it. And Stephen King was the Minister of Finance. And he admitted in, 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 in the parliament that at the time it was the right thing to do. So they passed it. So right now we have a big you and cry about the security levy as if it never happened. Boy, Lord, what are these guys doing? They passed it. The United States Party had an act on the books called security tax passed when many members of the present government were in the cabinet. That's a fact. What happened? When VAT came into being, we removed it. Okay? That's a fact. So, the, the, sanitary, the sanitary products you were speaking about, we were not satisfied that the consumer was getting the benefits. I made the point that there's a difference between cost and price. There's a fundamental difference between the cost of a good and the price of a good. Fundamental difference. So what you decided to do now, as far as sanitary equipment is concerned, we are dealing with the level of the price now. So you're going to put it on the price control, scientific Yes. Well, Prime Minister, my question will be strictly about St. Jude's. I thought you were happy that St. Jude's is going to be built and the stadium is going to be built. Aren't you happy? You, you, you have so much concern about St. Jude. Now it's going to be built. You've got to be telling me about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Prime Minister, have you ever visited the new facility? Yes. I, I saw it leaking, water all in. I saw no roof. I saw water in there. I saw the, 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 all the windows who, who water was coming in. And I saw a report that said it was 30% complete. You visited the site? Yes, not once. I was there a few weeks ago. And I also saw a report. I also saw a report from the former government that said it was 30% complete. I'm so sorry. <coughs> the, out of the 200 odd million, how much exactly will be spent on St. I have no idea because we're not, we're not doing it by direct award. We're doing it by tendering. So we have to look for the tenders and we still have them. And out of that, we are also going to put equipment and also we're going to do the stadium. So tell us again, what is the tender for? The tender is for the completion of the original St. Jude building. So at this time, you're saying that you have not appointed or a contractor has not been To work. A contractor has not been awarded to do, a contractor has not been awarded to do the additional works on the St. Jude Hospital as determined by the loan from the Saudis. What's happening at St. Jude now is going to be done from the local funds. Prime Minister? Yes. Do you enter on a tour with Joshi? Before? With Joshi, who is... Reynolds point person on the ground. Yes. In 
and that discussion, you asked Joshi about completion of the hospital. Yes? The suggestion was 1 to 18 months from Joshi to you. The dialogue is clear, it's online. Are you telling me that a contract has not been on the what is it on Joshi to me, not me to Joshi? <laughs> I'm glad you said it's from Josie to me and not me to Josie. Focus, Prime Minister, focus. But I'm focused. I'm focused. I'm asking the question. But I've answered you. Are you telling me that a contract has not been awarded to CIA for completion of the hospital? I'm telling you a contract has not been awarded to CIA for completion of the hospital. Why did you then have that discussion with Josie about completion? Because of the Josie was working. Come on. Come on. Josie is working as we speak on the hospital. So I have to ask him a question. I'm not the one who said it. He said it. I, did, I have to ask him a question. You, have you ever heard the Prime Minister say also in company 18 months? Prime Minister. Have you ever heard the Prime Minister say that? The question was, yes. Contract no. Was no. I think he's been very clear on that matter already. He's answered you. You're looking for a different response. And he's answered you that there is a tender process for the completion of the hospital. Now, you can move on to your next question, please. You're welcome. Thank you. My next question, sir, is discuss the tender process. The tender process, there, there's an agreement. You know, I feel so. I'm surprised that these questions are coming up. There's an agreement, you understand? Philip J. Pierre didn't go to the hospital and stretch his hands out and say it's too large or small. Philip J. Pierre never went to the hospital and said that happening has happened. Philip J. never said so. Philip J. Pierre never said so. All Philip J. Pierre did, he, he had experts, the same experts who were in the hospital previously. We never changed anybody, Mr. Elliott. So the same experts. The tender process is going to be the tender process. You're going to see, you're going to see a tender on these papers. That's what you see, like any other process. Right? That's what you're going to see, like any other process. Now that you've this, the funds to complete the hospital, can you tell us if Bush has come in first? Mr. Elliott, Mr. Elliott, why are you going through the same thing all the time. You've heard for yourself in the agreement, with the agreement. Now listen to me, I've never proclaimed the hostel expert. Eh? I've never proclaimed either engineer, don't ask me engineering questions. Don't try to figure you can tie me up in that. I'm not gonna get caught in that. You're not gonna get me to answer any questions about hospital business and thing. I'm the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I'm not an expert in hospital construction. Okay? So when you have these technical questions, I'm gonna say to the people who deliver it. Yes. You are Minister of Finance who sourced the funding from the source. Yes. Right? Yes. If you have not gotten a costing based on the number of beds, how did you decide on the Because, the because Mr. Minister, Mr. Elliot, Minister, Mr. Elliot, Mr. Elliot, yes. If you had not gotten that costing, how did you go wrong? Can you and read my mind? Second, Do you ever read my mind? And secondly, uh -huh. naturally, it is a hospital. Mm -hmm. It is based on the number of beds. Mm -hmm. I never said so. I told you look in the agreement. I said look in the agreement. You see what it says. There's an agreement. What what's your question? The question was so clear. According to agreement, it's gonna be a hundred bed hospital. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. But that was that's what it's all saying. There's no there's nothing new in that. That's public. There's been nothing secret about hospital, you know. Nothing secret. We never, the statements, and I know you, 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 you like, you, you have a man of great research. Look at the statements on the hospital. They've been consistent. We've never made any opinion on hospital. If you didn't get professional advice, I have never pretended to be an expert in hospital business or engineer. I'm not. The first set of advice came from a group of experts. They are the ones who made the recommendation and the cabinet accepted it. That's the first set. Too late. It's too late now. Yeah. Done already. What is done? Of course we We're not going back there. We are going to, The decision of the government is that we are going to work on the original buildings and the box is going to be preserved for further use. My final question to you, okay, sir, is, my final question to you, sir, is the, out of this 200 million, what is It is not being paid 
there is not not a cent because there's the the present money cannot the condition of that debt it can't be paid retroactively because there's accountability you know the Saudis there there's accountability we have to account for what's happening so part of it is that it's not going to be used for retroactive payments. Okay, so we'll now hear from the opposition. But you know, sometimes I I wonder. We've made it clear. Nothing that was not vulnerable before. There's no it, there's no evidence kind of it. I, you know, I did something. Eh? Sometimes I listen to these things when Mondian Melissa tells me, tell me, because you know, and then I wonder, I really wonder, because it fascinates me. Simple things. The Finance Act, you can read it. National Economic Fund, you can read it. Simple things. If there was, made a point again, let me make it uh, pollutively clear. Any item that was non vatable or it was zero rated or it was VAT exempt shall attract no health and security levy. The health and security level is at two points one in the customs. So when the goods come to the country, that a health and security levy, it is charged at the customs. There is no change in any software for anybody, those who import. At the services level, we did made some amendments. We said that if you are providing service, legal services, you can't get tax on the stamp duty. Okay? So we removed it. So the taxation, the consideration doesn't include the stamp duty. That was to, to support the consumer. And then he said the 12% levy will come at that point. But we recognize it will take some time. So we extended it to October for the services. But for the imports, that's been happening from the 1st of July. That's been happening. I don't think you know it's happening. Okay, we'll take the final question. Uh, Prime Minister, <clears throat> on that same question, mm. I have here a copy of the legislation that was passed in Senate of the health and security Which levy. one? Your amendment. And it says here... No, no, be careful. Your amendments. Which amendment are you talking about? Hold on. It says here, Chapter 44, Excerpt Tariff Number 44.01, and related subheadings, wood, and articles of wood, wood chapel. That is the actual that legislation. Which one? Is that amendment? Uh, let me read it for you. No, it's not why you heard it. It's an amendment. It is the bill for consideration. Is there an amendment, Miss? There's no amendment. No, there's, there won't be there. There won't be the next step. But it is in the legislation. No, the, that was the legislation. The legislation is no wrong. Last week um, the legislation was amended several times. I'll tell something. So the We're not perfect. I never said so. We're not but perfect. You see, this is the listen to me, bills. Miss. Miss, listen to me. Can, can I answer you? Can I answer yeah, you? We're not perfect. If we've decided, if we've seen, all legislation is that is legislation that deals with thousands of products. Listen to me, please. That legislation deals with thousands of products. Thousands. If we ever realize that something has sipped for the cracks, we'll amend it. We're not perfect. The same way if we had paid for vaccines and we had got the money. We would have come and said, listen to me, we, we made an error. We're not perfect. After all, I'm, I'm very surprised to about your vaccine money. Uh, sir, yes. In, 